life. And truly, uh, you know, stewardship is not just finances. It's everything. It's all about our life. Uh, he says, uh, he said, you know, we're going to give an account. And boy, we sure are going to give an account. I, I, I wrote down this one thing you said, Brother Chuck, and boy, it's powerful. Do we function or live by a clock or timetable or by what has to be done? So what do you mean? Uh, we think, okay, we got, we got, uh, you know, uh, I got to get, I have to get eight hours of sleep. I have to get ten hours of sleep. I just can't function without that. Or uh, are we function on that timetable, or are we function on what the things that need to be done in the days that we have and the existence that God's given to us? I want to use a simple little illustration today that I believe will really bring this thought home to our hearts. What I want to do, I'm going to need some help from the crowd, for the, uh, the crowd today. And uh, what I want to do is I want to set up a human timeline. I want us to take a picture, a snapshot about what it's talking about here, about the tale of, uh, that is being told about the number of our days. And so I want to start out, is there somebody here that's about 10 years of age? I don't know if you have anybody in here. How old are you, bud? Oh, you're close enough. Come on up here. You're 10 today. Right? And, uh, so why don't you just stand right over here if you would. What's your name? Chris? All right. You stay right here. All right. And then I need somebody that's about 20 years of age. Somebody about 20 years of age. 20 years of age? Okay. 19? Close enough. Come on up here. All right. Well, I sure hope we get some ladies up here before this is done. <laughs> all right. He's going to represent 20 years of age. How about somebody that's 30 years of age? Somebody 30 years of age, if you would. Come on now, don't be shy. Uh, 30 years of age? 30? Come on up. All right. All right. All right. How about somebody that is 40 years of age? Somebody 40 years of age. Okay, brother, come on up. Somebody 50 years of age. Somebody 50 years. Are you 50 years of age? Okay, come on up here. Yeah. All right, you can just stand right here. All right. And then somebody 60 years of age. Somebody right around my age. All right. 60 years of age. Somebody. Anybody? Come on now. 57. Oh. 57. 57. All right. Come on. All right. 57 years of age. It's close. All right. He'll represent 60. And now. How about, is there somebody that's 70 years of age that would be willing to step up here? 70, 70 years of age that would be, would be willing to come up and help me out here just to be a representation for this timeline. Anybody close to it? 67, 68, 71, 72, anybody at all? I know they don't believe it. <laughs> stop and I want you to think for just a moment and uh, about life. All of you out here can relate to somebody up here. I mean, you're in a bracket of somebody, some age bracket that's up here that's being represented. There are some young people representing the 10 years of age and then you watch as you go up and you see the aging process that takes place. It's just a natural thing. You go from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 70. And you know, this uh, Chris, right? Is that right, Chris? Chris is looking down here at the end. He's saying, man, are they old now. <laughs> All the way down there. But uh, what's your name, brother? Rick. Rick. Brother Rick's looking back and saying, where did the years go? <laughs> what, what happened? What? I mean, good night. I mean, time's, time has flown by so fast. You see, here's the thing. Though I set a timeline up here and we're, we're thinking about our lives and thinking about where we sit on this timeline, God does not give us the guarantee that our lives are going to be lived to the three score years. The truth of the matter is your life can pass at any one of these ages. Your life can be over with just like that. So it doesn't really matter the length of days that we live. What matters is what's accomplished in the time of God. God does God gives us each and every one a certain amount of life. And uh, as the last portion of scripture you read, Brother Chuck, I mean, it doesn't matter if you, you got five talents or two talents or one talent, we need to be using whatever God's given to us in the life and the days that he's given to us to accomplish the greatest that we can accomplish for him. I was thinking about, uh, I, can, I can tell you about people that, that who have passed away at these ages down here. I mean, I, I can tell you about some of your 11 years of age. I can tell you somebody that would stand right here where you're standing. 
He was 11 years of age when his life ended in a tragedy, what we call a tragedy. He was a preacher's son. His daddy took him out uh, uh, on a canoeing trip on his birthday, and he took his friend with him. And they, just a tra tragic series of events, they, they, uh, they'd stopped for lunch, and they they'd, uh, went out in the water, were waiting in the water, and they got caught in an undertow, and it pulled them in the water. And the daddy jumped in, the preacher friend of mine jumped in, dove in to try to save the two boys. When he got to them, they were fighting and flailing, and he grabbed a hold of one of them, and uh, trying to grab both of them, just got a hold of one of them. When the undertow kicked him out, he had his boy's friend. They found his boy about a day and a half later. His life was over. I mean, it, we're not guaranteed the years that we're going to live. That's why we need to do what the scriptures tell us there. And uh, as it says there in the last verse that I read, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Do you stop and think daily about the fact that this may be, this just might be the last day that I breathe in this life? You say, oh, I got all my life ahead of me. Oh, is that right? <clears throat> I can tell you a story about somebody that was 18 years of age in our church up there. Some of you may know the story. About 18 years of age. And uh, it was getting up to go to, well, his brother went in to wake him up to come to church on Sunday morning. And they found him dead in bed at 18 years of age. They, they have no... Uh, Nothing that they could, they went back to an autopsy and everything, could find nothing. No real reason, cause of death other than that his heart just stopped. What are you saying? Hey, friend, you don't know how many days that you're going to live. And so what are you accomplishing for God in the days that you do have? I mean, as we sit here today, what tale is being told by your life? I mean, is it a tale that people are want, going to want to talk about when your days are over? Is it something that's going to motivate other people? Is it something that's going to move other people to look back over your life? I mean, we talk about the people, the great people of the past. And we talk about Spurgeon, and, and we talk about Lee Robertson, and we talk about all the great men of the past. And why? Because they lived their lives out telling a tale that's worth rehearsing over and over and over again. Right. So what are you and I doing? Yeah. I mean, when our days are over, will it just be over and we're in obscurity? I mean, nothing ever. I mean, I, I want to leave this life knowing that I've tried to accomplish everything that I can accomplish for the Lord. Amen. Telling the tale that God wants me to tell. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. So what tale is your life telling today? As I said, no matter where uh, we fall in, in, uh, in, in this category here, we do not know how many days we are going to live. But one thing about it, when you and I come to the end of our life, Wherever it may be on this timeline, the scriptures do tell us, as you said this morning, Brother Chuck, that all of us will give an account. We will all stand and give an account of the tale that has been told. Let me just quote a couple verses to you here. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 12 goes on to say, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. It says over in Romans chapter 14 and verse 10, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. It also says, a young people, in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 9, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. We're all going to stand before the Lord. We're all going to give an account of the yeah. tale that is being told in our life. Yeah. You say, well, what are you going to give an account of, Brother Mark? Well, Brother, uh, Brother Chuck covered some things this morning, but I want to give you three things that I believe that we're going to give account of. And that's really the message. You say, what's that? Well, the first thing, the first thing that we're going to give account of is what we did with Jesus. Yeah. What we did with Jesus. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, whether we received him or we rejected him. Every one of us must give an account of it. Right. I mean, we have the privilege of uh, being in a country that has the freedom to preach the gospel, and you've heard the gospel, and probably if I just asked right now, how many of you know for sure you're saved and on your way to heaven? Almost the majority of the hands would go up and, and, and praise the Lord for that, but do you really truly know that you are saved and born again? I mean, I, I get this feeling that being raised in church sometimes we just put on the facade and we've never really come to the place to repent and trust Christ and never been born again. Amen. 
Right. I see it happen a lot where people get saved when they're older. Amen. I just heard of a story the other day where a preacher's wife got saved. Amen. I mean, what are you talking about? I'm saying, what have you done with Christ? Have you really truly received Christ as your Savior? Do you know for sure that your sins are forgiven? Do you know that you're a new man? Do you know that, is there evidence in your life? Does the Spirit, is it convinced with your spirit that you are a child of God? I mean, are you really truly sure of that today? Because it really does matter. It will matter one day. You'll stand and give an account of what you did with Christ. There's a world today that's trying to tell us, well, there's many roads that go to heaven. No, there's not many roads that that's go to right. heaven. There's one road that leads to heaven, and that is through the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. And that is the only hope we have. I had the privilege just a week, a week or two ago of, of, of witnessing soul went in with a, uh, with a uh, preacher. We were at a meeting I was preaching, and I started witnessing to a young man there at probably 30 years of age. And, uh, I mean, just, uh, 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 just a, a very worldly young man, you could tell, but he had a tender spirit. And, uh, uh, and, and I began to share the gospel with him and, and, and present the truth of the gospel, and present the truth of Jesus Christ. And he'd heard about, he'd been in a religion that, that taught him some things when he was younger, but, uh, uh, but he, he had never received Christ as his Savior. He knew some of the things of the scriptures. And that's why I went through it. But I took a little picture. I like to take this little picture postcard I have. <clears throat> Maybe some of you have seen it before, but it, it shows up. Uh, it's a picture of, of the earth of where we're at right now and people falling off into a chasm with flames coming up. <clears throat> and then it shows on the other side of it a picture of golden streets and of heaven. And then it shows the bridge that, get, that, that, that uh, spans that gap is the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's the only way from this right. life to the next. Right. It's through the cross and through the shed blood of Jesus. People say, well, there's many ways. No, there's not many ways. Right. Uh, 1 John chapter 4. Let me read just a couple verses to you here in 1 John chapter 4. I, I, uh, my sister uh, was in a, she was in a class <clears throat> here a while back that, took, that uh, was teaching on religions. She was taking a, a, a course in, at a college here close by. And uh, she called me one day and she said, you know, she said, I was going through this class and everything and really, you know, as they began to teach it and everything, I began to realize that we really, we really believe a lot the same. I said, no, we don't believe a lot the same. She said, well, really, we do. She said, you know, uh, you know the, and then she started to talk about the, the Muslim faith and some of the others that, you know, we're all going in the same direction. I said, we're not all going in the same direction. Right. Right. Uh, uh, the, di the difference is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What are you doing with Jesus yeah. Christ? It says in 1 John chapter 4, let me just read a couple verses to you here. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are God. Because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Amen. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, where you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in, in, in the world. What are you saying? Hey, anybody that doesn't profess that Jesus is the only way is the spirit of Antichrist. That's right. Amen. Anybody. That's right. Amen. What do you mean? What have you done with Christ? Hey, do you know that he died for you? Have you received the gift of eternal life? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. John 1, 12. Amen. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I sure hope that you know that you're saved. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven. Amen. Among men whereby we, we must be saved. It's through Jesus Christ. But the second thing that we're going to give account of is simply this. What we did... Not only what we did with Jesus, but what we did with the Holy Spirit. What do you mean? Hey, it says down there in verse 13, a little bit further down, Hereby know we that we dwell in Him and He in us, because He hath given us of His Spirit. How many of you do claim to be saved today? You claim that you're saved, born again, a child of God. Okay, put your hands down. How many of you believe that, that when you got saved, uh, that the Holy Spirit of God came to live and dwell in you? You say, I believe that, Brother Martin. You should, because that's what happens when you get saved. The Holy Spirit comes and takes up residence in your life. That means that uh, these guys raised their hand. They said they were saved and born again. That means the same Holy Spirit that lives in Chris is the same Holy Spirit that lives in Rick down there. I mean, he lives within our life. But here's the question. Every one of us, 
as we stand and look at the timeline and look at where we're at, can I ask you the question, what are you doing with the Holy Spirit now? Greatest gift that you and I have in this life is the Holy Spirit of God. You say, no, it's salvation. Oh, that's we're going to realize that a little bit later. But right now, the earnest, the down payment, the greatest thing that we've got is the precious Holy Spirit of God that lives within each and every one of us. So what are you doing with the Holy Spirit? You mean What do you mean, Brother Martin? <clears throat> I mean, that Holy Spirit lives in you for a purpose. That Holy Spirit lives in you not to make you happy. Amen. Right. That Holy Spirit lives in you not to make you prosperous. That Holy Spirit lives in you not to make you successful. That Holy Spirit lives in you for one reason. That's to get you to conform to the image of Christ. To live this life in a way, in a fashion, in a manner that brings honor and glory to God. So that the tale that you tell in this life will be a good tale. Amen. Amen. The, the sad reality is that many of us live our lives out. And we don't realize the power and the presence of that Holy Spirit that yeah. lives in us the way that we ought to. Because we've done one of two things. The scriptures talk about it. We can, we can either grieve that Holy Spirit. We're warned in Ephesians chapter 4 and, and verse 30, you grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, wherever you're sealed under the day of redemption. You, what does it mean to grieve? It, it means to bring grief to. You say, how do I bring grief to the Holy Spirit? By simply not listening to him. By simply not following him. Brother Chuck, when the Spirit says, and you need to give them a track. You need to hand them a track. Well, first of all, do you carry tracks in your pocket so that you can't give them a Bible track? Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit says, give them a track, witness to them. And you say, you know what? Somebody else will do it. Oh, how we grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. God saved your soul and mine so that we could know that, that, that what it means to be a child of God and so that we can help other people. And, and so that's what our lives are supposed to be lived for. But yet, we do simple things like that. How about when the... When the, the Spirit just moves you to do something or, or to say something or, and you just don't listen to Him. How about when you get up in the morning and the Holy Spirit says, it's time to open the Bible and read it. You say, well, you know what? I want to check the scores of the game or I want to get online and do this first or I want to do that first. You just read the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's right, man. Simple ways that we, and listen, let me tell you something. That Holy Spirit is very, very sensitive. Very sensitive. The Holy Spirit is so sensitive he can be grieved so easily. And then what ends up happening is we quench you. Quench the Spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5 says quench not the Spirit. What does it mean to quench the Spirit? It simply means to extinguish. I was a firefighter here in Ann Arbor before I went to ministry. <clears throat> 15 years there. What, what I did with my life, I tried to quench fires. Tried to extinguish fires. The Holy Spirit is like a fire that burns within us. Yeah. And if you're living for God, you know exactly what I'm talking right. about. If you're living the life you ought to be living, that Holy Spirit is like a fire that burns inside you and tries to get you to do the things that are right, tries to convince you of the things that are wrong, tries to lead you down the right path. But what are you doing with that Holy Spirit? Yeah. You're going to stand before the Lord one day and give an account of that. Amen. Right. Whether you listened to him, whether you followed him, whether you did what he wanted you to do or whether you didn't. I mean, every thing, every day of our life is going to go before us. You say, Brother Martin, I don't have to worry about that. I'm saved and I'm born again. Hey, there is a judgment seat of Christ that every one of us, the judgment of works, everybody's going to stand before that. Amen. Just because you don't have to go to great white throne judgment doesn't mean you're going to, not going to stand in judgment of the works and everything that's been accomplished and not accomplished. I believe there's so many of us that are going to have so many tears what you said this morning, Brother Chuck, we don't understand how fearful a day that's going to be. Right, right. So many tears because we didn't follow and listen to the Holy Spirit that lives in us. And we're living in a day and age where everybody wants to do what they want to do. The majority of Christians today live this life for their own good. Yeah. Amen, Brother Mark. That's good for you. Amen. Amen. The majority of Christians today live this life for what makes me feel good. Amen. What makes me happy. And that, had, that should have nothing to do. That's right. should have no bearing whatsoever. Amen. Exactly. That's why we're dealing with the problems and issues we're dealing with today. And the churches with the simple issues of standards and convictions. Yeah. And everybody, well, I've got my own standards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got my own standards, Brother Steve. Yeah. i got my own standards. Wait a minute. You don't have your own standards. That's and right. I don't have my own standards. If you're saved, blood-bought, born-again, uh, child of God, your standards are from that book right there. 
And, and I don't get this where we can say, well, I, I don't have that conviction. I don't have that standard. I don't have that. No, you know what you're saying is I'm going to live this life the way I want to live this life. I don't care what God says. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Amen. Yeah. Amen, Brother Martin. That's good preaching Amen. again. Amen. Yeah. What are you saying? That's the way we're living our lives. And we're going to stand in judgment one day for that. Amen. The tale that is being told in our lives. Oh, I've seen so many people that are giving up and, and giving in and walking away from the things that, that they know are right and, and just yielding themselves over. They don't realize what they're going to face one day. They don't realize the end of the tale that they're telling right now. That's right. Amen. How about this? The third thing is simply this. <clears throat> what we're going to give an account of is what we did for Christ. What we did for Christ. You're going to give an account of three things. Number one, what you did with Christ. Number two, what you did with the Holy Spirit. And number three, what you did for Christ. Can I ask you today, what are you doing for Christ? Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Are you living your life for Him? Are you accomplishing things for the Lord? Are you seeing souls saved? Are you making difference in people's lives? Are, are, are you being an encouragement to people? Are you being a help to people? Are you raising your children in a manner that they're going to go on and live for God? Are you discipling people and trying to help them? I mean, what are you doing for Christ? Yeah. That's the only thing that's going to matter once this right. thing's all said and done. Amen. You see, some of you young guys out there or young ladies out there will say, well, I'm just a young person and I can't do much for Christ. Hey, you remember the story I told you about the 11-year-old boy that passed away and uh, uh, tragically in, in the canoeing accident there at the beginning? Let me just tell you something. That little, that little young guy at 11 years of age probably accomplished more for God than many adults that sit in this room here today. He said, what are you talking about? 11 years old. Yeah, 11 years old. He, he, he ran a bus route with his daddy at 11 years of age. He'd already been a saved and called to the ministry. He'd already been called to the mission field. He knew where he was going to go to the mission field at 11 years of age. He was a soul winner. He won people to Christ at 11 years of age. He made a difference in his church. He made a difference in his home and his family. He made a difference everywhere. What a great young man he was. Hey, uh, our college, when we, when we started the college, <clears throat> and uh, this happened right around the time we started the college, and I asked preacher, hey, would it be all right if we, if we start a scholarship in, in his name? And so every year we give out a scholarship in the name of that young man, Nathan Hack, and it's a missionary scholarship and we give uh, free tuition for a missionary student for a year uh, for uh, through because of the life of this young man, the life that he lived. Somebody is able to, and his story is told every year when the scholarship is given away. Why? Because at 11 years of age, he told a tale of his life that's worth talking about. Amen. That's worth rehearsing again. Amen. I told you about uh, that that 18 year old man, young man that passed away. I'm mean, going to just say this. Uh, and I'll, be, I'll try to be as kind as I can. That 18-year-old man had turned and rebelled and was walking away from God. So at 18 years of age, when his life was over with, there's really not much that I would like to say about his life. That's sad. But I can tell you about a two 17-year-olds and a 16-year-old that died in that crash up at our church five years ago in that accident. And I could tell you a lot of stories about their lives. <laughs> hey, that, that, to 16-year-old... He was, good. he was going to turn 17. He was a junior at, at our, at our, in our Christian school. He was the young man in our Christian school. That Anybody that came to, to, our, to our youth group or to the Christian school, they weren't a stranger. He wanted to get him in. He wanted to uh, 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 make them feel like they were at home. The last year of school, in the Christian school, he went to the principal and he said, Hey, would it be all right? I, I, I really want to see revival in our youth group. Would it be okay if I, on Wednesdays, instead of going to the lunchroom with everybody, he said, I'm going to fast and pray that day. Could I go downstairs and just pray alone in the basement and beg God for revival? The last year of his life, that's what he did, was get alone with God and pray and beg God for revival for our youth group. Now, his life's still being talked about. <laughs> Why? Because he told a tale that's worth telling. Amen. And if people want to talk about it, people want. And I'm telling you what, the moment he met the Lord, Brother Cal, the moment that he saw him, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guarantee you, he was thrilled that he lived his life, the days of his life, to accomplish what he could for the Lord. Amen. 
And I know a young man that was in that accident was 25 years of age. How old were he? 32. 25 years of age. Well, what a young man he was. He was my right arm in starting the Bible college. He took care of the buildings for me. He had, he had skills in, in, uh, in building and construction and plumbing and electrical. I mean, he was in comp national competitions when he was in high school. He could have been making $60 to $80 an hour. And he forwent that to help me with the buildings at the college. A lot of times we didn't have the money to, to do the things that needed to be done. That young man would get, take money out of his own pocket to accomplish those things. He ran a bus route in our church. And uh, at the funeral, there was testimonies given. Three or four different ladies who had picked up the kids on the bus route that got up and cried and gave testimony about how that he had come and helped them. How that one lady said he came, our, our hot, hot water heater went out and we were having to use cold water for everything. And he came and I didn't have money for a hot water heater. He's a single mom. He went and bought a hot water heater, took it and put it in himself, installed it for her and everything. I mean, just story after story after story after story about it. He's the one who remodeled our, our, our college uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, chapel building there. That, that right before he died, he just finished remodeling that thing by himself. After hours, after he was done with his other job. He, he ran a bus route. He was a soul winner. He was so faithful to the Lord. I'm going to tell you what, in 25 years, I guarantee you, he probably accomplished more than I will ever accomplish in my days, in 25 years of life. Why? Because he set out to tell a tale that was worth telling. Praise God. What about you today? Yeah. Where are we at? What tale is our life telling? And I could go right on down the list. How old are you, brother? 40. 40? You can write on for <laughs> I can tell you a couple of ladies here, and some of you that I know that used to go to Metro, you know what I'm talking about. A couple ladies here at 36, 37 years of age, their life ended. Sweet ladies. Did all they could do to raise their children in life and do the things that were right. You know what? Uh, their family still, one of them's still in church here. The other one's still in church uh, down in uh, um, down in uh, Georgia. And uh, those kids, one of them was just going off to Bible college. One of those children that was, uh, those ladies whose life ended, what well, we would say prematurely, but they made such an impact and such an influence in their own families that their families are still going on for God. Are you living that kind of life? That once the day, once the day that you breathe your last breath, the tale that's going to be told is the tale that's worth telling. Amen. I can tell you, brothers, in, in this category, get down in these ages here, closer to you. <laughs> you all know the stories. You all know the situation that happened here in your own church. What's his daddy? But if you went to the funeral, you saw yeah, right. what happened at the funeral. You heard what happened the Sunday following about the two or three people that came back to church, guys, men that worked with him and said, that, I, I got to get this, I, whatever he had, I got to have it. I need to have that in my life. I, what? The tale that was told was such a good tale. Something was different about his life. Amen. He lived a life to honor and please and glorify God. And God's given, how old are you, brother? 67. 67. And God's blessed Brother Rick with this amount of years, and hopefully he'll give him many more years. You know what? A lot of times, older people in the church, they get to the place where they feel like, you know what? I can't do anything. My life, you know, when I get up here at this age, there's not a lot I can, get, I can accomplish for God. Wait a minute. God's got you here for a purpose and for a reason. Amen. And he's given you life because he wants you to use it to tell a tale. So, in closing, simple little thought, simple little message. The Bible says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to these. Why? Because we live our lives as a tale that is told. What tale is your life telling today? You know, in the book of James, and I'll read this and I'll be done, James chapter 5, and verse number 13, it says this, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow... We will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. But he's saying, God has given you a precious gift. He's given you life itself. And if you raise your hand and say, I'm born again, a child of God, he's given you eternal life. Amen. 
but we're going to come and stand before him. Right. We're going to stand in judgment and we're going to give it. Have a home prepared where the saints abide, just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. With the blood was strong, I will shout and sing, just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory I'll stand just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land. Have a home prepared where the saints abide. Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land Mighty host, I'll stand just over in the glory land. With the blood was strong, I will shout and sing just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land. There with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land. Join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land
hopes are building hopes down here and planning ahead. So busy with their fortunes, they forgot what Jesus said about the wars and earthquakes and the victories budding leaves. But that group of people getting ready to leave, ready to leave in the twinkling of an eye, making investments in the bank up in the sky. Happy preparations are the reason to grieve. Are you in that number? Sinner, what's the reason for your needless delay? While you're hesitating, Christ could come just any day. Heed the Spirit's calling, make your way to Calvary. And get in that number, getting ready to leave. Ready to leave in the twinkling of an eye. Making investments in 